So guys, welcome to introduction to Java programming language session. And this session will be for uh, 60 minutes, means nearly next one hour, I'm going to explain you the introduction to Java. I'm not going to teach you any programming, means I won't uh, make you to write programs because this is the just introductory session. So you need to understand what Java is all about where Java is used and uh, what are the career opportunities if you really learn Java. So let me share the screen guys. So hope uh, you can see my screen. Uh, just type uh, S in the chat box if you can see my screen. If it is visible clearly, very good. So the first one is the course introduction, guys. In course introduction, you'll understand that how we are going to learn Java. See, generally what happens, you know, like uh, when it comes to Java, they'll explain one or two lines of uh, uh, definition of Java and immediately start writing programs in Java. But remember, that is not the right way to learn any subject. You need to understand the foundation and fundamentals of that, of that language. That is very, very important. So first focus on the introduction part so that you will understand the real importance of that language. And once you are clear with the importance, then you'll get a lot of respects towards that language. And once you understand the real strength of that language, then the way you learn that language will be at the different level. So, what do you mean by Java? See, Java is a programming language. It is a high level object oriented programming language developed by a person called James Gosling at Sun Microsystems in 1991. And it is publicly released in the year 1995. And in 2010, the company Sun Microsystem is acquired by Oracle Corporation. So when I say Java is a high level programming language, that's something but you can write programs in Java by using simple natural language like English without really bothering about the underlying architecture of your machine. That's what we call high level. Object oriented means the programming languages which are there in the market, they follow a certain, a certain style in writing programs and that is known as programming paradigms. So the well-known programming paradigms are procedure oriented approach and the second one is object oriented approach. C programming language uses the procedure oriented approach in developing programs, but whereas C++, Java, C Sharp, they use us the object oriented approach in writing programs. Okay, so you, you got basic uh, definition about Java. Now you try to understand where Java is used. See, Java is used for developing desktop applications. What do you mean by a desktop application? A desktop application is a, a computer software which runs on your local machine and it doesn't require any internet connection. So simple example, your calculator application is known as a desktop application because to run this calculator application, you don't require any internet connection. Okay. Using Java, we can develop web applications. Web applications are nothing but the programs which requires uh, the internet connection to run because those applications will be stored somewhere in remote servers and using a client program, that's something about your browser, you're accessing those applications. So we can develop websites and web applications by using Java. And enterprise applications are nothing but the very big applications 
which in turn interacts with other applications to process a transaction you can take the example of an e-commerce application or a banking application that application internally interacts with uh, many more other applications to process one transaction the best example is like if you are booking a ticket online through IRCTC website then that IRCTC website has to interact with uh, the payment gateway providers and payment gateway provider has to interact with uh, the banking servers and finally your transaction will be finished such applications are known as enterprise level applications we can take the example of an e-commerce application like amazon so to to process one transaction in amazon it has to interact with uh, so many banking applications payment gateway providers and delivery partners because your product has to be again delivered such applications are known as enterprise applications and using java we can develop that applications also using java we can develop mobile operating system and uh, whether you know or not the android application the android software is built upon java technology so if you want to learn android programming then first you have to learn java standard edition that's we call actually core java okay embedded systems are built by using java java is used in robotics and games so java is a prerequisite means there are so many advanced level technologies which requires the knowledge of java for example if you want to build web applications by using angular net node js then you must have knowledge of java programming language to develop applications at the server side if you want to build your career in testing then selenium is the tool which you have to learn that is built upon uh, java technology and if you want to develop enterprise applications then you need to learn some frameworks like spring hibernate and uh, some server side technologies like servlets jsp you need to have knowledge of java for that big data hadoop requires knowledge of java android app development requires knowledge of java so java has became the benchmark or the prerequisite for many more advanced technologies in the market so before you think of becoming a full stack developer you have to think of java first and uh, full stack developers has a very great demand in java and that too java full stack developers has very big demand in the market let's try to understand the history of java like why java is uh, very famous why java has become choice of every developer in the year uh, 2000 so for that you need to understand the basic history so see java is originally designed to build applications for interactive television and set up box applications means you need to understand that sun microsystem is a company who develops softwares for consumer electronic devices means so suppose you are buying an washing machine like lg or a micro oven then those companies will manufacture only that particular hardware but today every electronic device electronic equipment has become smart they have softwares in built is it clear they works with the help of some in built programs and those programs actually built by some third party companies who are into embedded systems and uh, developing applications for consumer electronic devices like this sun microsystem is the company whose goal is to develop softwares for consumer electronic devices so they got an order to develop a software for a tv setup box so james gosling and his team thought that 
if we use C and C++ programming language for building the software for the setup box, then that particular software will be an uh, that software the setup box dependent software. Why? Because C and C++ applications produces machine code directly, and they realized that this uh, setup box application belongs to an entertainment industry. And uh, if there is a great demand for setup boxes from various different companies, because entertainment industry can grow faster, then they has to develop softwares for uh, different different uh, architectures of those setup boxes. So they thought that why don't we develop one programming language whose applications can be made suitable to run on any setup box of any architecture or any model. And that's where they initiated the development of a new programming language because by that time, there, are, there is no such programming language available in the market who can produce the mission independent code. And uh, they started working. And I think within 18 months or two years of their efforts, they developed a language and they named that language as Oak. Oak is the, the first name of the Java programming language. And they given the name of this project as the Green Project. But they didn't expect it, means the demand for the TV setup boxes has not grown as they expected actually. So they thought of using this particular language, which they have used for a different purpose. At the same time, World Wide Web, World Wide Web is nothing but a consortium. Consortium is, is nothing but uh, a community who fix guidelines for companies who are into internet software development means the the companies who develop software for internet has a community which is known as world wide web consortium and uh, by the time like in 90s the networking has grown and uh, the internet has started getting evolved means systems or the networks from different geographic area started getting connected with each other for sharing information. But they couldn't find an application which can be run on uh, multiple computer system having different operating systems and uh, different architectures. Means in internet, you cannot expect everyone to use the same platform. Is it clear? Means you can't find everyone using Windows operating system or Unix or Mac. You won't find the uniformity of people. People from different geographical area connect to the internet by using different devices. So World Wide Web is looking for an application who can produce the code which can be run on any kind of machine having any architecture. And the similar kind of language the Sun Microsystem is having. So they, 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 sh they have produced this language to World Wide Web and they accepted this as the language of internet. So they thought to launch this language to the public, but by the time Oak is already registered by some company. So they thought of changing the name of this language and James Gosling and his team members has habit of consuming coffee. So they thought that why don't we dedicate uh, the name of this coffee to this language. So Java is actually an island in Indonesia where the first coffee is produced, which is known as Java coffee. And you can see the picture like Java coffee bean. Okay. So that's the reason whenever you see the Java logo, you'll see the cup and saucer symbol with the two flames on that. So that indicates uh, that they dedicated this particular language to that particular Java coffee. Hope you have uh, got clarity on this. What are the different editions of Java? Like Sun Microsystem, like uh, how they released Java in the market. Sun Microsystem has released Java in the market 
in three different flavors. One is the standard edition. Second one is the enterprise edition. Third one is the micro edition or mobile edition. So Sun Microsystem Company never released Java as a core Java and advanced Java. It is the educational institutions who has given the name like core Java and advanced Java for this language. But Sun Microsystem never said that, that this is core Java and this is the advanced Java. So they released Java in like three flavors, standard edition, enterprise edition, and micro edition or mobile edition. Using standard edition, you can develop applications for the desktop, means you can develop desktop applications, and uh, you can develop LAN-based applications, local area network, the applications which runs within a particular geographical area. But if you want to develop enterprise level applications, or applications for high-end servers, then you have to use some other technologies and all those technologies together is known as the enterprise edition. So you can see the complete green color uh, uh, palette, the box is incomplete without the blue color one. That's the thing, but if you want to learn Java enterprise edition, then without learning the core Java or the basic Java, or we can say standard Java, it is incomplete. So you need to first work with uh, core Java, that's something but the Java standard edition. And then you have to move towards the enterprise edition level. And micro edition, mobile edition is completely different. So if you want to build your career on embedded system side, if you are from uh, BTEC EC background, then you can choose that particular line. But being a Java developer, standard edition and Enterprise edition is enough for you to learn. So Java is not only the software only for building applications for internet. Java is available in many more devices today. Java is available in smart TVs. Java is available in many more mobile devices. Java is available in navigators. The Java is available in copiers, ATM machines even Kindle reader, even coffee making machine if it is smart. So Java is not only used to develop applications for internet, but it is also used to develop applications for many more electronic devices like mobiles, cards, setup boxes. So we can simply say that Java is everywhere. That is the, the demand for Java in the market today, guys. And uh, what are the different types of applications we can develop by using Java? By using Java, we can develop different kinds of applications. Majorly, I can divide them into four types. Standalone applications, which runs on your local machine, which doesn't require any internet connections. Web applications, the applications which runs on uh, web servers, enterprise applications, as well as mobile applications. So enterprise application, is a suit of program. It's it's combination of many more programs. But whereas web application is a piece of software application. Is it clear? So you can imagine like enterprise application is the combination of many more web applications. Okay. And uh, what are the features of Java? What makes Java as one of the the best programming language for internet application development? And that you understand only when you go through the features of Java. So let's try to understand what are the different features for Java. The first one is Java is simple programming language. Means the syntax of the Java is taken from C and C++. That's why Java is known as simple programming language. Java is object oriented. Java is portable. Java is platform independent and architectural neutral. Java is a dynamic language. Java is distributed. It is secured or robust. Applications will run at high performance and it is a multi-threaded programming language. Let's see each feature in detail. See here, the syntax of the Java is taken from C. Concepts are taken from C++. 
So if you look at this picture, persons who comes from C and C++ background, for them learning of Java will be quite easy. But at least knowledge of C language is mandatory before you begin your career in Java programming language. Java is known as a object oriented programming language. So object oriented programming is a paradigm or you can see the style of writing programs. So there are probably four pillars on which the object orientation concept is built. Encapsulation, abstraction, polymorphism and inheritance. And classes and objects are the building blocks of uh, object orientation. So all this practically uh, will come in future once we start object orientation in Java. Java is portable. Portable means a Java application is designed to work for any kind of environment. So Java applications can be accessed using smartphones, smartwatches, tablets, laptops, anywhere it can be used. This is what we call portability of Java. This is one of the best and the powerful feature of Java, which makes Java as the the language of the internet and that is platform independent and architectural neutral means platform independent means java programs can be executed on any operating system architectural neutral means java programs can be executed on any hardware actually is it clear so by focusing on the hardware differences it is known as architectural neutral and by focusing on the operating system differences, it is known as the platform independent. So how Java became platform independent and architectural neutral? This is how it is. So let's try to understand things in detail. Once you write a program in Java, it is known as the source code. Okay. Imagine you have created a file with the name sample.java. So Java C is the Java compiler. After compilation, it produces the byte code. Byte code is not, is, is, is not the source code or the machine code. Means byte code is neither the source, source code nor the machine code. It is an intermediary code, okay, which contains byte code instructions and it is stored in a file called the dot class. Means if the source code file name is sample.java, then the byte codes will be stored in the dot class file with the name sample dot class. Now, this particular byte code can be run on any machine having JVM installed on it. Is it clear? So on Windows operating system, Windows JVM will be there. On Unix, Unix JVM is there. On Mac, Mac JVM is there. On, on mobile, mobile operating system JVM is there. So here, JVM is platform dependent and Java applications are platform independent. So in future sessions, there is a very deeper level session only on explaining like how Java programs gets executed inside the memory. We have a separate session on that exactly. Java is dynamic, means while executing Java programs, the user can get required files dynamically from local drive or a computer which is uh, 1000 miles away from the user just by connecting to the internet. Means while writing programs in Java, while executing programs in Java, if that application requires any supporting file, then it can load that supporting file at runtime into the memory and it can make use of that particular file while execution or if you are connected to internet, then it can take that particular file from online repository also. So this is the reason we call Java as the dynamic programming language. Java is distributed. This is also again one of the best feature which makes Java as the language of the internet. Means, see generally one program can run on one machine. But imagine if the size of the program is very big and if that single program itself requires very big computing power, then the one single application, you can distribute it. The application can be distributed across 
multiple systems and this is we call actually the distributed feature of java one single program see two different applications running on two machines interacting with each other it's okay but the same application one part is running on one machine another part is running on another machine and they are interacting with each other they are sharing resources with each other this is we call the distributed feature of java java is secure see the c c++ programs runs on the operating system directly so the operating system can access these applications directly c c++ has uh, the concept of pointers which can access the memory addresses directly but as but whereas your java application you will not access your operating system directly there is one layer called jvm java virtual machine and this particular layer is a middle layer in between your operating system and your java application so java application doesn't run on the operating system directly they they runs on the jvm only and the concept of pointers has been eliminated from java okay and there is one more like uh, component called bytecode verifier that checks the each and every piece of code whether it is legal or not robust robust the dictionary meaning of robust is strong so java is robust because it uses strong memory management and there is a automatic garbage collection which runs on the jvm machine to eliminate objects which are not being used by the java application anymore means if there are some any unused objects the objects which are not required then automatically they are removed from the memory means time to time the space is getting created in the memory for your java application which will give you the high performance at the same time java applications can handle runtime errors by using a concept called exception handling mechanism and as i said high performance that's nothing but though the java has so many features it has undergoes different different levels for its execution but time to time the performance of the java is always maintained it will never be late in giving you the result actually so for the first time the java programs are compiled at a time and every time second time onwards whenever you run your java program then the java interpreter directly takes the byte code and uh, produces the native code that's nothing but the mission understandable code and java is a multi threaded programming language that's nothing but multi threaded means running two or more parts of a program means running multiple parts of a program simultaneously this is what we call actually the multi threaded feature of java so so the examples of multi threaded applications are like server applications and the games like if you see a multiplayer game game is only one there will be only one object but two players will be shooting at that object so these kind of applications are built by using a feature called multi threaded so these are the features which makes java as one of the best programming language for developing server side applications as well as for developing internet applications so these are the different versions of java so first of all you need to understand that uh, up to 2010 the development of the enhancement of uh, the upgradation of java is taken care by sun microsystem company but later oracle corporation has acquired sun microsystem means the acquisition has completed on january 27 2010 and from that time java is under the maintenance of oracle corporation and these are the features of java started with 1.0 in the year 1996 and 1995 and uh, for every few years the language has added so many new features okay and now we can see here uh, the latest version of java it's not like sc18 if you want to know the latest version of java what you can do is you can simply open the browser and you can say uh, java latest version download then you'll see java 
will be the latest version is it clear java 20 will be the latest version of java just a minute i'll show you see java 20 is the latest version so for every six months they decided to improve the version of java is it clear so at the time of making slides uh, uh, the java 18 is the latest one and remember uh, it is always recommended not to use uh, the latest version because the latest version will have so many bugs so it is always recommended to use like two three versions earlier because uh, those versions will be the full fledged versions is it clear so uh, java 17 is known as uh, the lts uh, version that's a thing but any like updation which is required for the or the java has been done for that uh, java se 17 means uh, like anything if uh, upgradation is required box fixing is required everything will be uh, done for that uh, lts so lts is nothing but long term support actually the meaning of lts is long term support means uh, java will provide a long term support for java se 17 actually this is what the meaning of again uh, like i have just taken you like backward like before that uh, se 11 is the lts version before the java 8 is the stl means in this LT lts versions uh, they introduced uh, like uh, some new features is it clear see every version they introduce some new features but ltn version will have uh, some uh, very very important features is it clear so this is actually the history of uh, the version history of java hope you got clarity on this and uh, how java program runs and what is portability and platform independence difference this is one of the very very important concept and uh, this is the last topic of this uh, today's session so see what is the meaning of portable portable means moving the source code of uh, application from one operating system to another operating system so we say c language is a portable language that's nothing but the dot c file you can move it from one operating system to another operating system and you have to recompile it over there but whereas Platform independent means moving the executable file from one operating system to another operating system. So you cannot, you cannot move, you cannot run the executable file of C and C++ application which is generated for the Windows operating system on a Linux OS because the executable file will have the underlying architecture of this particular operating system and the hardware on which this uh, executable file will be gen is generated means the executable file will contain the instruction set for this particular architecture and the operating system so you cannot shift it to any other operating system for the execution but how java programs are made like portable means a platform independent because java compiler is not producing the machine code it is producing the intermediary code which is known as the byte code and this byte code is interpreted at the moment whenever the java programs are run means java software developers developed virtual machines that's nothing but jvms for almost all the operating systems in the market so there will be a different jvm for windows there will be a different jvm for linux and there will be a different jvm for mac os that's why while downloading java software from the official website, it will ask you very clearly, you want to download Java for a Windows or Mac or Unix or Linux. So the slogan for Java is write once and run anywhere. Means you develop the program once and run that program anywhere. And here you just understand the exact difference between portability and platform independence. Portability means moving the source code from one platform to another platform and platform independence means moving the compiled code from one platform to another platform for the execution directly. So the platform independent code can be executed directly on a 
other platform but whereas in portability only the source code is moved whereas you have to recompile it again as per that particular operating system if the compiler is available for that operating system so guys the the slogan for c and c++ is write once compile anywhere but whereas the slogan for java is write once and uh, run anywhere so guys uh, this is about uh, the introduction to java programming language this is about the introduction to java programming language and if you have really liked this particular basic introduction then please let me know in the comments below this video okay so thank you so much and uh, keep attending sessions hope you have enjoyed this bye bye and take care guys